Open only mode. I want to thank everyone else who have our Tips and Tricks webcast series. Uh, we're excited for today. We've got Paul Cardetta with Well. Thank everyone for joining. Next. Joy Team, the Director of Business Development here at MLogica, uh, your host today. And then I'd like to turn it over to Mike Harris. So we saw our next Tips Center web series, uh, a little bit about the ISOG and Logica partnership. Mike. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to this afternoon's presentation. As Dan said, it's part of our Tips and Tricks series of uh, TechCast that we're doing this year in partnership with MLogica. We're very grateful for them to, for helping us put these on the ice. Today's TechCast, as you're aware, is based on Science IQ, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, just a quick note uh, for scheduling purposes, make a note in your notebook that Wednesday, November 17th, uh, we're doing a performance and tuning Tips and Tricks uh, webcast uh, replication server. That will mean we will have covered ASCE and rep server uh, through November uh, and then we'll look at tools and topics for 2011 please do continue to send in your suggestions for what you want to hear about so do want to take just a brief moment for those of you who are not aware uh, we have a an ASC performance and tuning tech cast uh, with one of our other partners on Thursday uh, two of our ISEC members Peter Dobler and Kevin Sherlock will be answering audience questions primarily Admitted uh, ahead of time on performance and tuning within ASC 15. So if you've not already registered for that, please do go to our website, www.isug.com slash upcoming under events, and through to that webcast, and, and make sure that you register for that event too. Back today, this we have uh, Paul Canetta, a uh, former Sybase employee, uh, now working for BTO Technologies. Um, and uh, Paul will be giving us tips and, ticks, uh, tips and tricks for column-based world based on the Sybase IQ database. Um, so if you should be familiar with Sybase IQ, it is a column-based database rather than a row-based database. And Paul will be uh, giving us the best information that he can from his vast experience uh, with IQ and multiplexing in the IQ world to uh, give you guys all the information that you need, the best information you need in order to do your jobs more effectively. And that is the prime purpose of the TechCast that we are doing. And, and again, thank you for educating for sponsoring these. Our job is to make your job easier and to give you information that you need. For everybody taking part today, uh, we will have a Q&A process as we go through the TechCast where we will be uh, answering questions on the console that you can submit. Uh, we'll, we'll keep the questions back and we'll ask Paul at the end. So if you've got questions as we go through the presentation, please do make sure uh, that you submit them via the console and we'll come to the Q&A session at the end. And, uh, it's an opportunity to answer those questions for you. Again, uh, taking part today. Dan, back to you. Great. So much for that, Mike. To you who are new to MLogic, I want to let you know we are a consulting services company. We specialize in enterprise data management. We uh, focus on estimate management and resource management and business intelligence. Happy to take part in this web series combination with iStock. And we want your feedback. We want to share these are as high value as we can for our our customers and clients. Someone introduce Paul Cornetta, Paul CTO of BMM Soft. He's the chief architect responsible for the EDMT server certification as the world's largest data warehouse. Had a 2009 Guinness Book of World Records. Very impressive. Uh, Paul Cornetta was for the CTO of Sybase IQ and Base, uh, and is regularly recognized as one of the leading efforts in the industry on both unstructured data management and CPU. I'll just turn it over to Paul. All right. Well, then, first of all, thank you very much for, for, uh, for the intro. And uh, good morning or, or good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending on where, where you are. Um, today's agenda should be, should be exciting and, uh, and, and interesting. And we have three topics here. One is why and what is the column database, such as IQ. Then we'll talk a little bit about EDMT server and how can such a powerful database, such as you, uh, be used to handle structured and unstructured data. And, and unstructured part is uh, is uh, something new to, to uh, those people who come from the relational world, if you will. 
<coughs> and then we'll, we'll quickly uh, uh, cover what is new in IQ 15.2. So, um, let's say that customer pain, pain points are the usual thing. You know, data is growing fast, users are, you know, uh, multiplying, queries are getting more complicated. Um, there is a demand for business analytics that uh, happens uh, longer in as a as a best mode. Uh, we know that uh, OLTP or, or ERP world is completely familiar and and completely okay with uh, and uh, with the real time processing. You know, meaning one or two seconds delay. Everything happens in real time. Sometimes in 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 milliseconds. Um, but the analytics are actually uh, getting into the the real time mode fairly quickly. We did, you know, five or ten years ago when when I started with with Sybase, ninety percent of customers would basically backload their data into into you, and you know, daily or weekly loads were okay, monthly were okay sometimes. Uh, recently, uh, that is a minority of customers who are who are ingesting data once a week or once a day. It's now coming pretty much uh, real time. <coughs> and then to say that traditional databases can uh, cannot me, though, uh, 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 demands is uh, probably an understatement. <coughs> so let's say, what do we do uh, to handle the, the, the growing demand uh, for ethics in real time, ad hoc, etc.? Uh, let's use IQ as an example because all of us on, on the call are pretty familiar with, with IQ. Some of us, like myself, have spent last 10 or you know, 15 years working on it. Um, so, IQ is a column database. A column is a separate entity on disk. So, think as a completely vertically um, or database. Now, on the databases, this one, IQ has <coughs> index, uh, default index, and some other smart indices. And what we know is that we can ingest data really quickly, really fast. And the best part is once the, the commit has been completed, the data that's in the database and fully indexed. <coughs> the the um, optimized storage is a very nice result of a column architecture because input data can be compressed really well because it is the same data type that, that sits next to each other. So we are compressing columns rather than compressing rows. And as a result, <coughs> um, I haven't really seen Data, many IQ databases we did not compress data better than 50 percent, which typically, if you pay attention, 70 or 80 percent. Again, data driven, but it's heavily, heavy compression. What's also important is that uh, the way IQ is uh, uh, issuing IO requests to storage is fully order of magnitude uh, more efficient than other databases. And that is a benefit that, that uh, many times gets overlooked. <coughs> now, obviously, IQ retrieves only the, the, the columns that are um, used by a query. And this is significant benefit, especially uh, if you know that uh, most of the tables in, in, in data warehouse systems uh, have tens and hundreds, and also some of them actually in, in thousands of columns. Sitting only the column or a couple of columns that you're interested in, Versus all hundred or maybe a thousand columns reduces I/O again by a factor of 10x or 100x or or, or uh, God knows how much. And EMA uh, actually has no restrictions. Could be star, relational, uh, slake, and one very important thing or benefit of of uh, uh, IQ and column databases in general, you can add uh, new columns to a existing table with having much of a, uh, having any performance penalty. It is completely natural thing to add a column or remove the column. So here is really something that, that I already mentioned. If you want to process some analytical work uh, using conventional row-oriented databases, then we'll have to actually start uh, scanning most of the columns 